Now, no fewer than 109 persons have been burned to death after fire gutted an illegal oil refinery site at Abacheke in um, Ibuema community in Ohaji Ibuema local government area of Imo state. Now, it was gathered that the incident occurred, or which occurred on Friday night, claims cause of life while others were seriously injured. The head of operations of the National Emergency Management Agency, Ifanya Naji, while confirming the incident, said only 20 persons died during the inferno. But in an update on Saturday, Naji said so far 109 bodies had been recovered while others were still missing. We have the Commissioner for Petroleum Resources in Emo State, Goodluck Opia, joining us on this conversation. Good morning to you, Mr. Opia. Many thanks for joining us on the breakfast. Thank you. All right. Uh, it was a terrible situation over the weekend. Uh, can you just give us an update specifically what happened and what we have at this particular time? What's going on, really? Um, like you just said, uh, was an ugly incident that took place um, midnight of uh, Saturday, the 22nd of February. And then, um, so many um, lives were lost as a result of a uh, fire outbreak at uh, an illegal refinery site somewhere around uh, the bush of Abenzi, Ebema, and Ohaji, Ebema, and local government area. Um, like I said, too many lives were lost. At the moment, there is no uh, definite uh, figure. Uh, the number being uh, branded around uh, uh, in the room of uh, speculation, but the summary is that many uh, people died, men and women. Um, I have personally visited the sites of the incident. Uh, the Honorable Commissioner for Health and the Honorable Commissioner for Environment also visited the um, NEMA officer in uh, charge of uh, um, East also visited the um, arrangement is on ground to uh, ensure the evacuation of the bond bodies today and then uh, the Minister of Environment is taking steps to um, undertake the communication of the area. Uh, NEMA has promised to do something quickly um, um, to find succor for the uh, affected uh, families. So far that is the situation. All right, uh, let's still talk about uh, this issue of an um, illegal refinery because uh, from what you've told us, the explosion was a result of uh, an explosion, um, a fire at the illegal refinery site. What's the situation with uh, the, uh, this oil bunkering um, activities uh, in Emo State? Uh, how far has your ministry gone con uh, on this particular issue? Because uh, over time, there have been series of explosion, uh, not just in Emo State, but other state, in River State, and uh, other state that we can even mention. It has been going on unabated, and over time, it has resulted in people you know, losing their lives and people actually maimed and uh, wounded and seriously. From what you've told us, a whole lot of people died in the inferno. But tell us specifically the activities of illegal bunking and what your ministry has done to actually bring this uh, down over time. Okay, thank you very much. It's a very uh, unfortunate situation. Um, there are so many cases of uh, illegal bunkering um, by unscrupulous criminals who vandalize crude oil pipeline, siphon crude oil, sometimes for uh, refining, and sometimes for outright sale of the crude to um, willing buyers. 
this uh, has done so much harm to our environment, to our rivers, to our fishing ponds, and of course our soil. Predominantly, our people are farmers and fishermen, and uh, the um, exploration of oil generally, even by the oil companies themselves, is uh, affecting the environment. So, now, the activities of the illegal refiners who use uh, unconventional means is even worse because um, bulk of the quantity of the crude which they are unable to refine goes into the soil, goes into the rivers, goes into the uh, fishing ponds, aquatic climbs are lost, wildlife are destroyed, and of course, like I can say, soil fertility is also eroded now. So, so the um, people suffer. Besides uh, these uh, environmental problems, the illegal bunkering is uh, economic sabotage affect the economy of the country, the economy of the state. And so the government through the Ministry of Petroleum Resources has been doing so much. We have been embarking on advocacy, you know, trying to let the people know the negative consequences of uh, uh, illegal oil bunkers. We also partner with some oil companies to physically attack some of the illegal refineries, but the more you destroy the, the um, illegal refineries, the, the more they crop up there and there. You know, so it's a, it's a, a problem. It's a, everybody appears to uh, be involved in in, in uh, this uh, hopeless Mr. Opier, here and there. Mr. Opier, let me just... Uh, uh, Barge in here for a bit. You said that the more you try to apprehend uh, these um, illegal refiners, the more uh, you know they keep on with their activities. Why is that the case? You know they are aware. You have done a lot of advocacy. You've done a lot of sensitization to these people, and they know what the consequences are. Why do you think they would actually risk their own lives? You know to be involved in something that could actually kill them. Honestly, difficult for. For me to, you know, say the reasons why people get this, involved in such a risky um, suicidal business. Some people want to say, ah, it's a result of uh, unemployment, it's a result of uh, uh, poverty, hunger. Well, can unemployment be responsible for somebody taking uh, of that kind of risky? Um, venture and um, a crime that is well known, the consequences is heavy. You know, so I, I don't even want to uh, sympathize with anybody who gets gets involved in, in this, and you know, uh, because it's uh, unemployed. Unemployment is a general, a global, a global issue today. The national problem. So okay, if so, you so, think so, that so, your so, case is worse and then you want to get involved in illegal bunker and get go, bonds, go like, uh, you know. Um, let's get to it now. Justin had asked what you're, um, what you're doing. I mean, you are the commissioner uh, at this particular, I mean, looking at this, um, you know, sphere of control. And it has to do with petroleum. What's your ministry doing? What are you doing? Uh, yeah, the, like I like I said earlier, um, we are we have committees attacking the um, uh, presence of these uh, facilities uh, in the bush. Um, we collaborate with security agencies and oil companies. You know, uh, provide the equipment. This is what uh, is called one boogie. What they are destroy the things, sometimes bury them, you know, on that track, you know, but it hasn't, hasn't been able to, um, you know, get 
have been getting rid of uh, this activity. Okay, uh, let, so I think let, what we have to decided again. to do more is to go after these uh, operators, you know, getting them arrested and ensure proper uh, seat for the future. Okay, but so let's you get know. back to it again. Uh, you have mentioned that uh, there's need to go after them and arrest them, and uh, there's a lot of collaboration that you have actually done, you know, with uh, the oil producing companies. But the governor of River State recently had mentioned that the reason that oil bunkering is thriving in Nigeria is because security agencies are involved. He mentioned the fact that, you know, the army, the civil defense, everyone who talks about the security agencies that is being even, fully that is involved. Even the and that's problem. the reason why it is so difficult, you know, to fight this particular issue. Not also um, overlooking the fact that we actually earn from this. If you look at our earnings, we're a monocultural uh, economy or we are we, we highly dependent on oil at the end of the day for our earnings. And so if we have people who are stealing the oil or vandalizing, and if you have all of this, it, it's definitely telling on our economy. So okay. what do you make of this? Do you also think that security agencies are involved in this and that's why the fight is so impossible because who do you arrest now? Uh, yeah, I think, I think, the I think this oil is part of you, the major you, problem. Okay. The major problem is that there's so much connivance between security agencies who are supposed to um, be the ones uh, fighting against this uh, menace. You know, most of them get involved uh, you know, in the business, become partners in crime with uh, the perpetrators of uh, the genius crime. And um, it's actually not helping matters, you know, the problem. All right, Mr. Opia, can you uh, give us uh, maybe a bit of um, clarity so far in your advocacy and sensitization? How many um, illegal um, uh, bunkering sites or refining sites have you been able to discover in the state? And specifically now for this one that happened over the weekend, uh, what are the plans, uh, the immediate plans for the affected community? Well, um, there are many of them along the uh, um, oil producing areas of Ohajibuma and Uguta, you know, along the pipelines, uh, Shell, Ajib, and other oil companies. There are too many of them. Um, the terrain is not quite easy. These, these things are done right inside the creeks and swamps and thick forests that uh, Sometimes it's very difficult to to penetrate. You know, um, it's just not an easy task fighting fighting this crime. I think uh, what happens is that time goes on, we continue to um, come up with new ideas based on uh, what we also know as you know concerning the uh, new strategy. Uh, there are many, there are many of these issues, that's right. Oh, um, I, I just hope that what okay. has happened will be um, a deterrent to some of them. And I really doubt it, because even before now, incidents like this have been happening, but not this magnitude, and um, not to the knowledge of uh, many people. You know, so I think, I think that... Um, Believe you me, it's a difficult situation. It's a, it's a menace, uh, 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 a major challenge on the hands of, of government. And, but uh, I pray God will uh, help us to overcome. All right. I also asked uh, the extent of damage done. Uh, from visuals we could see, there were uh, burnt um, cars and, um, you know, lands burnt. Uh, but, uh, are there villages per se affected, aside from life that were, that were lost, uh, were farms burnt? Uh, what's the extent of um, this damage to you know, the ecosystem and, of course, uh, the waterways? Come again. What's the extent of this particular um, inferno, the one that happened over the weekend, uh, 
Uh, what's the, ten, the extent of damage uh, to the environment? Uh, we know that over 100 lives um, have been lost. We can see yeah. the burnt cars. So what's yeah, the extent when of I visited, When I visited the area, I, I was amazed at the level of uh, uh, devastation. Not just by the final, but by the byproducts of the uh, re uh, refining itself. You know, I, I think... Uh, this whole process is a, a complete waste on, uh, on uh, the resources of the nation. You know, the, the equipment is not even um, capable of extracting much of the uh, contents of the, of the crude. You know, so the rest they cannot uh, extract. It's wasted in the water, in the river, the fishing pond, and of course on the soil. You go around that area, the whole soil is, uh, you know, poisoned, so to speak. You, you see the presence of uh, uh, crude oil everywhere, you know. And the um, issue of the soot is, is real. As uh, the flame goes up everywhere, you you have suits, you know. Now, it, it's difficult to um, find fish in some of those. In, uh, um, very quickly, very quickly. Uh, all that. Very quickly, Mr. Opia. So since you've said um, that um, farmlands, uh, the soil and uh, uh, the rivers uh, around there have been affected, in the immediate terms, now, are you asking Reston to, to stop farming or to stop fishing in that particular area for some time? Or what exactly are you saying to Reston right now? Well, in fact, in some of the ponds, there wouldn't be any need to fish because there's no fish anymore there. Mm. You know, in some of the fishing ponds, there wouldn't be. And um, I think that uh, there is need to even confirm if the uh, issues in the, in the streams are even what eaten anymore. You know, so, so, so these are the issues, these are the challenges that are the task before us right now. Yeah. All right, we must say a very big uh, thank you to you. Uh, good luck, Opia, Commissioner for Petroleum Resources in Emo State. Uh, thank you so much for all the thoughts that you have shared on the inferno uh, in your state that happened over the weekend. We do appreciate your time. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. It is our pleasure. It is still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. That's as much as we can take on this conversation. We'll take a quick break, and when we come back, we're looking at party politics. Uh, lots of uh, you know numbers are uh, talking here. The People's Democratic Party and Reno Omokri saying that um, they might not really stand uh, a huge chance uh, come 2023. We'll look at all of that in a moment. Stay with us.